Welcome to Stormrunner Load. In this tutorial, we will take a look at the Notifications panel in the Results page. If you haven't run a load test yet, check out our tutorial about analyzing test results. If you have already created and run a load test, you should already be watching the online results page for this test. If the test already finished, go to the results page and find the test you have executed. If you haven't created and run a test yet, this page contains a sample load test we have created for you. Click it now and look at the offline results for the test. This is the notifications panel in the test results page. It contains three kinds of notifications, SLA breaks, anomalies, and script errors. SLA breaks occur when the average transaction response time for a certain transaction exceeds the defined SLA for a period of 15 seconds or more. If at least one SLA break occurred during the execution of a load test, the test status is failed. For each SLA break that occurred during the execution of the load test, a notification appears in the SLA break section of the notification panel. Click the SLA breaks notification to see a detailed list of the SLA breaks. Each item in the list shows the transaction name, the time in which the break occurred, and the duration of the break. Clicking the item will add the transactions per second graph to the runtime dashboard. Notice that the added graph widget has a red SLA break indication. Clicking this indication will show a list of breaks that occurred in this graph. Clicking one of the items in this list will automatically set the time picker and center it around the chosen SLA break. Anomalies occur when a measurement exceeds the baseline calculated for it. The baseline for a measurement, represented by the colored area that surrounds a graph, is calculated as the test runs and represents a prediction of the expected behavior of the measurement if the application remains stable. If one measurement exceeds the baseline for significant distance and time, or if several measurements exceed the baseline at the same time, we say that an anomaly occurred. For each anomaly that occurred during the test run, a notification appears in the Anomaly section of the Notification panel. Click the Anomaly notification to see a detailed list of anomalies. Each item in the list shows the measurement name, the time in which the anomaly occurred, and the duration of the anomaly. If several measurements had an anomaly at the same time, they will be grouped in the same anomaly item. The rank column for each measurement in a group indicates the probability that this is the measurement that caused the anomaly, or at least the first measurement to react to the anomaly. Clicking any measurement name in the list will add a graph of the selected measurement to the runtime dashboard. Notice that the added widget has a yellow anomaly indication. Clicking the indication will show a list of the anomalies that occurred in this graph. Clicking one of the items in the list will automatically set the time picker and center it around the chosen anomaly. Script errors occur when any of the running users in the test encounters an error. For each script error that occurs, a notification appears in the script error section of the notification panel. Click the script errors notification to see a detailed list of script errors. The script errors are grouped by error ID. Each item in the list shows the error ID, the number of errors of the same type that were reported, and a sample error message. You can also show the errors graph from the client section of the measurement galleries to see the time distribution of script errors that occurred during the load test. And that's it. Handling notifications is as easy as 1, 2, 3. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment on the YouTube page for this video. For more helpful tutorials, visit our YouTube channel.